So in this project, I'm going to be showing you the wiring of a Montgomery square button elevator fixture. This particular one is a terminal call button with a singular button, and this also has a key operation switch. But this will also show how you can make the key turn on the light. So I've made videos on these buttons in the past, However, if you've never seen these buttons before, they're actually kind of a neat design. They are a square button. As for the key switch, this is just an Adams key switch that was added on at some point. Uh, I do not believe this is original to the fixture, just based on all this kind of glue and such that was added to the back. I believe this was an afterthought. So if we turn to the back, we can see how this works. We can see the contact and the lamp holder. So taking the lamp holder off is quite easy. It just clips on the side. This is a 155 volt, six watt bulb that's in here. Won't be using that for this project, but that's what was used in the field. So remaining here, there is this metal bracket here, which is what you clip the lamp holder on. Then there is the contact here, and this is the same kind of contact that's used on older Montgomery buttons. It's got this disc, and when you press the button in, it pushes the disc against these metal contacts, completing the circuit. This particular button does feature the normally closed contact as shown by these two here. So these two pins here would serve as the normally closed contact and then you could pretty much use any of these three here as the normally open. They're not independent switches though because they're all connected by this disc. So before I get started with the wiring, I'm going to do a quick restoration as best I can of this plate. This is a brass plate. You can kind of see it's corroded and it's worn here and just doesn't look the greatest so I'm gonna see what I can do to clean this up hopefully it looks a lot better when I'm done all right so after about an hour of work I have restored this piece and it looks a lot nicer now it's nice and shiny still has a lot of dense scratches and whatnot in it but overall this thing looks a lot better and I'm really happy with how it came out so at this point I'm going to put everything back on the button now before I do that part of the restoration is going to include cleaning up the contact on the button. And the reason why I do this is because if you notice on this disc here, it is kind of darkened around the edge there, a lot of dirt. So one of the things I recommend you do is take apart pretty much the entire buttons, all the contacts and clean them. This will just make it where you'll have a much better result when it comes to making it light up. So that's actually quite easy to do. First thing I need to do is remove all these wires. And then all you have to do after that is take all the screws out and all of the contact pieces will come out. Okay, so all of the pieces here are clean. This will work a lot better. So at this point, it's time to put the button back on. Now, I want this to be an up button, so I'm just going to rotate this to the correct position and place it back in. So now that the button is put back together, it is time to begin with the wiring of the button. So as always, the first thing I always like to do is remove all additional wires so we can have a nice fresh plate to start with. First thing is the light bulb. As I mentioned earlier, this is a 155 volt bulb. It is still in good shape, so I will hold on to that. However, for this project, I do not want to use 120 volts. It's possible, but unnecessary for what I want to do. And also I'm trying to figure out why this wire now won't come off. So with the lamp holder, we'll want to acquire a new bulb. So this here is my new bulb. This is an incandescent bulb. And this is an E12 base. So you can just look up any E12 bulb that you want, whatever voltage you'd like to use, and clip that right there. So first thing I'm going to do is actually modify this terminal a little bit. This is one of the normally closed contact pins, which kind of fell down there. So I'm removing the contact from that because I don't want this to interfere with the circuit at all. 
And what I'm going to do, so what I'm gonna do is turn this terminal into just a spot to connect whatever I want. Most likely the common for everything will go on to here. So like I said before, I want to make it where both the key switch and the button can turn on the light. In order to do that, first thing I'm going to need is a power supply. I'm gonna use a nine volt battery pack. So I'm gonna choose one of these connectors to be my switch part. So I'm just going to choose this one. However, since I also want the key switch to work, I need to bring another wire from this down to here. So essentially what we're doing is making two buttons activate the same light, just a parallel switch circuit. So it's kind of like an OR gate. If you push this, it turns on, or if you push this, it turns on. Now as for the key switch, this is actually kind of an important thing to note. So there are two switches on this key switch, so this one and this one. However, this one here, you can see by the longer metal piece, this is a normally closed switch. So that means the light will be on when the key is in the off position because it will pass current through here. I don't want that, I want it when it is on the on position. So I'm going to use the normally open switch over here. All right, so that's the first part of the circuit made. The next part is we now need to connect one end of the lamp holder to the other end of the switches. So it doesn't really matter which two terminals you want to use. I'm just going to use this one right here because that completes the circuit. So right now pushing the button down would complete this circuit. Of course, this needs to connect to this here, but this would complete the circuit lighting this up. Still have to do this, so need another wire. So now it's set up where turning the key switch on or pressing the button will light up the light. The last thing to do is connect these negative parts together. So I'm just going to use this terminal I just made a minute ago for that. So that completes the wiring. I always like to do a quick test of the button to make sure it works. So you can see here when I press the button, it lights up nice and bright. Now as for the key switch, I currently don't have this key handy on me and I really don't feel like going to get it. So I'm just going to cheat a little bit and manually activate the contact on the back here just by pressing it down. And you can see as I do that, it lights up so I know that when I put the key in here and turn it, it will light up. So that was the restoration and wiring of this old Montgomery elevator button. I am extremely happy with the way that this panel came out. It looks a lot better. I mean, look at that shine. And of course, pressing the button makes it light up, which is pretty cool. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next project.